a very good morning uh, to one and all who are present here for this webinar conducted by Baladasan University Entrepreneurship, Innovation and Career Hub. This uh, webinar uh, topic is on uh, Internet of Things, Talent Development. And this is a five days webinar, one hour per day. And I am uh, Tyagarajan, working as Assistant Professor in Computer Science, Central University of Tamil Nadu, Thiruvadu. This is the course overview uh, for the five days. Um, first day, that is today, uh, we are going to talk in detail about the introduction to Internet of, Internet of Things. What is the Internet of Things, IoT? And, uh, how it has evolved so much and it become parts and parts of human life. And it does make our life so wonderful with the sophistication being provided. And this is what I'm going to discuss to emphasize and to understand the importance of Internet of Things. Uh, we have taken some three examples uh, by which the importance of Internet of Things is brought out. And in today's session, we also differentiate between uh, what is an IoT device and a computer, and how different they are, what are the different emerging trends that are contributing towards this IoT their risk, challenges, all of the things will come under today's discussion. On a second day, we will deliberate on uh, IoT architecture. On day three, we'll discuss on IoT clouds, analytics, and visualization. On day four, we'll be talking about network and internet in IoT. On the day five, we're gonna talk about what are the current trends, what are the research area that can be focused in IoT in detail. This is how the five days have been uh, planned. The term Internet of Things is first coined by the British entrepreneur and researcher Kevin Ashton at MIT Labs. He envied that this IoT is going to change the 21st century with its capabilities. And he says that this IoT will produce lots and lots of data where the device communicating among themselves, those data will be gathered. And he was very sure that this will change the human life in a drastic way. And the first paper on uh, Internet of Things, which is uh, released by the MIT lab, uh, was named as Internet Zero. So, to start with, we, we should know what is an Internet of Things. Before that, we'll see what is a device, first of all. A device is nothing but a thing, a physical object or a thing, which will do a very specific text, a very specific task. So maybe you can take a refrigerator as a thing, and you know what's the job of a refrigerator? The job of the refrigerator is to keep the things cool. So that is a device. So you can say anything that does a specific task is called as a device. Then we'll see how this device we have seen as a refrigerator can be converted slightly intelligent. If we have a refrigerator and if we add some intelligent component to it such that the functionality of the refrigerator enhance, you have to make a uh, note of the point here that still the functionality of the refrigerator is to make the things cool. But upon adding this computation intelligent to the refrigerator, in what way its functionality is being improved? That is what we are all about. So if you add a small intelligence, such that intelligence may be a very small thing. If you want to intimate fewer 
householder that the number of eggs in the egg tray is going out of stock. If you want to add that intelligence to this refrigerator, that is possible. So that, uh, the knowledge that I'm going to give to the refrigerator to intimate to the user that the eggs are running out of the stock is the intelligence you're going to add, by which the user's experience on the refrigerator got enriched, or another way by which the user got benefited out of this refrigerator. Because if this intelligent is not there, one fine day when the user opens the refrigerator, he may, he, may, he may find that the eggs are running out of the stock and therefore his plan of breakfast may be a question mark. But if we add this intelligent, simple intelligent to the refrigerator, it will help the user such a way by noticing the user on the UI provided on the refrigerator that the eggs are running out. This is a small intelligence, but it's very, very important and it is having a high impact on human life. This is adding a small component intelligent to the refrigerator. So this is, this is an IoT. Uh, I would say perhaps no, this is not an IoT device. The second step, Apart from adding this computation intelligent, if we add a network connection to it, then it's made complete. If we add the computation intelligent, if we add the network connectivity to a device, then we can say that particular device is an IoT device. Again, take the same example you just take from the beginning, again, the refrigerator. Again, a small computation intelligent, as I said, the device which informs the user that the eggs are running out of stock. You have a device to only calculate that, maybe very specific, or it can do multiple tasks, but take an example for a very specific intelligence being added to the refrigerator. And it has the ability to connect with the network. Then we can call this as a IoT device. So when we call any device as an IoT device, you should have some sort of computational intelligence and it should be able to connect itself to the network. Then we can call anything as Internet of Things or any device or Internet of Things. And uh, don't you think this intelligent uh, looks like a computer? Uh, hold on uh, for this question. For this question, we have a deliberate discussion in the following slides. So can we call this IoT device so far, which we have discussed as a computer? That's a question we'll discuss in the forthcoming slides. Again, take the typical refrigerator. This is a double door refrigerator. And the ultimate purpose of this refrigerator is to keep the things cool. And it has a very, very simple user interface. Very simple user interface. Then comes an intelligent refrigerator. So what does an intelligent refrigerator do? As I said, it informs user about the stocks it is available. For example, when it is, when you need to buy fruits, when you need to buy eggs, when the stocks are running out, it will inform the user on the screen or a simple user interface which is being displayed in the diagram on the screen. That's a user interface in which the refrigerator, who, whatever it wants to communicate, it will put there for the user so that user on visiting the refrigerator and looking at the message thrown by the refrigerator, he may understand that he want to buy eggs, fruits, and something. Apart from it, if you add further intelligent, it can also convey to the user that its water filter need replacing. Okay, that can be added. When, you, when you're running out of bread, when you're running out of fruits, everything can be done. And more importantly, you'll enjoy this point. The, you, you will store all the items. Now, what is, uh, we'll store any items in the refrigerator. So the refrigerator, we can add some intelligence to the refrigerator such that the amount of fat that you consume in a particular week or a particular day or a particular month, that can be summarized and that can be projected in the UI of the refrigerator. That can be easily done. Again, we have to add the intelligence to the device. And uh, the final uh, intelligent refrigerator, uh, what it can do is that based on the items which is there in the refrigerator, it can also suggest you a menu for the breakfast. For example, if you have enough amount of uh, eggs 
and breads in a refrigerator it can even suggest that you can have a bread omelet in the morning or it can say if you have enough vegetables along with the breads in the refrigerator it can say you can have a bread sandwich or any other items which is there and it can say that this can be prepared as a breakfast having the sufficient quantity even all these are possible if we have add if uh, if we add that particular intelligent to the refrigerator this will make our life easy and uh, um, very important point to be noted here is that i said it is as a intelligent refrigerator it means uh, it is i it, i mean that it is not an iot device why because we don't have a concept of internet till now to this for this example we say it is as an intelligent refrigerator not an iot refrigerator because we uh, have added only the intelligent which will uh, uh, throw the user this points like running out of stocks of bread fruits eggs how many fat content they uh, take in the particular week but it is not network unless otherwise this intelligent refrigerator is network we cannot call this refrigerator as an iot device now we call this refrigerator as an iot device because we add the component of internet to it so refrigerator is the first one device then we add the computation intelligent then if we add the internet it makes it complete and we can call this as an iot device or iot refrigerator so what will happen if we connect a refrigerator to internet so it has enormous amount of capabilities and it will make our life much more even sophisticated than the intelligent refrigerator of course intelligent refrigerator also makes the human life so sophisticated and if you want a much more sophistication if the internet has all the network is attached to this uh, intelligent refrigerator then uh, human life will be much more uh, easier than imagined for example if we connect this iot uh, if we connect if we have this iot refrigerator what will happen apart from the intelligent that it sends that eggs are running out of stock milk is running out of stocks bread is running out of stocks if we have an internet attached to it the refrigerator by itself can place an order in the online shopping portal to buy breads to buy milk or whatever which is running out of stock imagine that this kind of uh, facility is being provided then how our life will be so if is in internet is added it's a third component which is being added to the refrigerator it can order the foods by itself when it is running out of the stock you may ask how the refrigerator will know that it is running out of the stock that is a computation intelligent part which is being added on upon adding the computation intelligent the refrigerator will work on the intelligent and it will order from the online portal for the stock which is running out and apart from it is placing an order it also compares the price it searches for the lowest price from among the online shopping portal and it will place the order on the lowest shopping portal such that the item purchased will be cheap as i said it can order as i said it can detect when the water filter has to be changed apart from detecting when the water filter has, has to be changed it can also place an order to internet to buy a new water filters such that it delivers and it can be changed at appropriate time it also provides the consumption information that how much bread you are consuming how much uh, fruit juices you are consuming those information will be collected by these iot devices and this information about the particular usage of a stock in a particular month may be communicated to the marketing purpose such that the any marketing company will know that how many items you are uh, purchasing for a month and how much is usage for the month how whether you are drinking the you know, mango flavored juice uh, more in a particular month or whether you are consuming bread or fat at times such that the marketing agency will get those details from the refrigerator and they can able to better supply you with that grocery list so imagine this greatly functional enabled refrigerator will definitely have yeah much uh, sophisticated and we live a much sophisticated life to the human so this is how a internet of things enabled refrigerator will function to have a better understanding we had included a couple of more examples on this iot so that the importance can be really felt 
so i would advise apart from uh, the household hard terms which can which we have it can also be anywhere it has placed its footprints all over all places it can also uh, it also placed its footprints in the transport in, this is a, I know the picture which is being uh, presented, you know, it's a very old, pretty old number, but it's a very strong car compared to the new one which is being arrived. So this is a car and it's been uh, released around 1915-60s, 1952-1960. And uh, how this car functions, um, it functions mainly uh, with help of electrical and uh, mechanical forces and electrical and mechanical controls. Uh, this is a typical car without uh, any kind of intelligence or uh, with, with, uh, without any adding uh, the internet into it. It's a very normal car. Again, as I said, again, I would display this foot in all phases of life. It is also uh, placed on the transport um, domain. So, for example, now you take any uh, 21st century car, we have a n number of ways by which this IoT scan uh, make our driving much sophisticated. For example, if you want to uh, have a lock, we have uh, uh, IoT enabled uh, device in it. Uh, if you want to play some music, again, we have IoT enabled player in it. We have a Google map, messages, light, tracks, camera. We have n number of IoT devices can be incorporated in the 21st century car. For example, if uh, the fuel is running out while well, you're driving. Imagine that you are uh, running out. You are uh, just driving the car and uh, your uh, fuel is almost to be over. And uh, this IoT enabled car will say that you the current fuel in the car can run up to this kilometer and you can uh, able to uh, um, view a petrol bank which is there nearby one kilometer. So it is mandatory that you have to fill the petrol in that particular Petrol bank stations. These kind of information will be provided if we have a IoT enabled car. And apart from that, this IoT enabled car will help us in many number of ways. For example, imagine that uh, you are uh, driving a car and uh, you uh, turn on the music while driving the car and you are running, and suddenly you are getting a call. If the car is IoT enabled, then immediately upon receiving the car, the volume of the song will automatically got reduced. That's the way you can speak. So the driving cannot be disturbed. So you can actually, you should not pick up a call during the driving, that's a different thing. But anyway, when you are attending a call, I mean, when receiving a call while driving, the music which is being played, it can be reduced by itself. If you enable that particular uh, IoT device in your car. And this, there are enormous amount of, uh, uh, opportunities uh, for you to use uh, IoT devices incorporated into the vehicle as, a, as it is listed in the diagram. And one more, uh, most important thing that you should note here is that this IoT devices will not change any of the user interface complication. In, in other words, the user interface will not be complicated just by introducing IoT devices. If you see a car, the car objective is to drive safely, of course. The car Objective is to drive for us to take from one place to another. On, on keeping adding these IoT devices for the lock or for playing the music or for uh, deducting the brake systems, any number of IoT devices can be added. And uh, these IoT devices which is being added will not change the user interface of the car. This is very, very much more important to note. That these are additional facilities which is being supplemented for us for the main specific task. The main specific task is that to drive the car. So in how to enhance our experience on the driving, these IoT devices are being added. Okay, and it's so access there are n number of ways by which you can add this IoT devices to the car, and it depends on what you are having a very specification, it depends. IoT devices can also be used in logistics. So in 1970s, uh, for the logistics, uh, you have uh, the barcode, which is being used for deducting our movement of uh, the baggages from the godown to the shops. So this is a, a barcode which is being projected on the PPT, which uh, says SSE content, whatever content it is. So in 1970s, what will happen is that whenever you uh, transport a garbage, uh, garage, 
uh, a material from the godown to uh, the shopping uh, mall this materials has to be scanned so there will be a scanner uh, in, on which this uh, barcode has to be shown and more now in many shopping malls they are using this barcode and it is very cheap so you have to show this barcode against the scanner and in such that the scanner can detect this barcode and it can it can keep track of its movement you can easily track the movement the main ultimate purpose of this barcode is that to keep track of the movement from where this item has been shipped now where it is moving from there where it is going so you can easily mark the movement of the materials from its origin till its where it reaches that is what the ultimate purpose of this barcode slowly this barcode has been uh, developed and now we have uh, the rfid tags uh, that is being used in this uh, uh, logistics. You can see uh, the figure of RFID there, where we have a, a circle and middle we have a, a chip, and the circle is nothing but the antennas. And uh, this antenna is facilitated. Like, see, in the barcode, you have a difficulty. Sometimes the barcode will not be able to detect by the scanner. In that case, it will be very difficult uh, for us to keep track of the movement of a material. For example, if you are just uh, moving the materials through the scanner and some of the items in the may not be detected, barcode may not be detected by the scanner, then the particular item will be missed or the entry will be missed. It's a very difficult task. Whereas if you use these RFID, these RFID, these are antennas. These antennas will give a signal in the particular range. Okay, and you have a chip attached to it. So, a chip will contain the memory and uh, it will have a complete information from where it has been origined. And using with the help of these antennas, we'll have a sensors which will be able to detect this RFID signals in a particular range. So, it need not brought near to the scanner. Then, it easily it can register the movement from one place to the another. This is an intelligent RFID. The chip will contain the intelligent. So the presence of this RFID will be given by the signals and the sensors is able to receive the signals and you can say this box has been moved from this good on and it has reached the shopping mall one. So it's much, much it enhanced and it has, uh, it has been used extensively in the logistic nowadays. And the third example which uh, uh, I like to show is that smart home. And so uh, I would like to uh, play a small video uh, on the smart home, uh, which is about uh, for a few minutes. Please have a look on it. Please uh, look at this video on uh, smart homes. This is a IoT enabled uh, car. The user is driving on, he reaches his home. The gate sensor and his car sensor communicate and the gate opens. On parking his car in the parking lot, the lightning control sensors will get into action and it will switch on the lights at the entrance. The user can unlock or lock the door based on the device which is attached in his mobile. And using the motion sensors as the user gets the lights will switch on. And again, the mode of the light can be adjusted, whether it's evening mode or morning mode. And even the brightness can be adjusted as it is rocketed by the user. You can even control the temperature as you wish. You can open the cut times, having the sensors installed in the cut times. Again, the IoT enabled cut times. And as the user walks in the staircase, the lights will get on. And uh, when he reaches upstairs, Light will switch off automatically, and if you have IoT, IoT enabled electrical system that will save lots of your power. You can even control a smart enabled uh, TV, smart TV with the help of the IoT enabled devices. You can play the desired movie on the smart LED. All right, let's get to work. Hey, Rome, are you freaking out? No. Yes, you are. Uh, what's your Nice. You can also have an anti theft being activated that whenever uh, you are going to sleep, and if you activated that uh, anti theft uh, mode in your uh, IoT sensor at home, uh, it will uh, detect if any kind of uh, intrusion is being happened and raise an alarm uh, for the, to the user. So, so far now, 
So for now, we have uh, seen about three different examples. Uh, IoT refrigerator, we have seen. We have uh, seen uh, how IoT has been used in logistics, how IoT can be used in transport. So these three examples are given to really emphasize how this IoT has changed the human life uh, in a much drastic way.